All right, so ceilings, same thing as the floor. I want to get a nice straight edge on here and make sure that things are level. Uh, these old homes are notorious for being uneven and unlevel. So double check everything. So I'm fine over there, but it looks like back here, um, it's not terrible, but you can see right here, I almost got three quarters of an inch between my uh, side rim joist and where I need to be. So I'm just gonna fur it down. Uh, let me just use a two by four. So we were pretty good over here. So we'll just keep this flush. And then we'll just drop this two by four down to where we need it. Stay right there. Okay, so we're gonna have a basically a wall that we're gonna frame in the tub. So we need to get a couple studs here. So 12 inches going across here. And we need something here. So really eight, eight and 12. All right, so we're gonna do this drywall ceiling and I'm just by myself. So, um, you know, when you do stuff by yourself, you have to kind of set things up so that you're not set up for failure, basically. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put a ledger board up against the wall so that I can have a catcher on the one side of my drywall. And what really helps out, I mean, this is definitely by no means a necessary thing, but getting one of these collatigated, I think that's how you call it, collatigated. I'm not really sure, but these um, strips of screws that are already on a magazine like this really makes it easy because I could just screw them into place really quickly. Now for ceilings, I would recommend inch and five eighths inch screws and also glue the ceiling as well. This is 16 inches on center, so we're in pretty good shape. If you're on 24s, I definitely would glue it. Um, you wanna get as much strength as you can. Um, I know a lot of trusses and stuff are two foot on center, so if you do that, definitely glue it. Now, if you don't wanna get into the expense of a drywall gun like this, uh, just getting a dimple bit for the end of your uh, regular drill would suffice, you know? And really, if you're only doing seven or eight sheets, you know, a dimple bit's probably the best way to go. Um, so we're gonna do half inch drywall all the way around. Um, I'm gonna get the moisture resistant, so that's why it's gonna be purple. Um, I do think that's a good idea for a bathroom setting. And uh, we basically have everything shimmed out, all level, all ready to go. So all we have to do is glue it and we're gonna roto zip out our 
vent fan. But first, let me go ahead and put my board on the wall here. This is gonna catch the one side of the drywall. And I'm just gonna leave it down like about an inch and a half or so. Just, you know, I don't wanna have to fight getting that piece of that board in there. So hold, I'll keep it down. Okay, so we're gonna put some glue on the joist. And all the way around my vent fan too. See that? All right, it's a 36, 36. Okay, so now where these sheets beat butt, I like to use this little tool. You can basically just screw this into place. It kind of gives you a little bit of a lippage so that you can easily get your other board up. All right, so one of my favorite lights that I like to put above my showers and my tub surrounds are these halo four inch lights. Really makes it easy. I just run the wire up loose, cut the hole, and then install this. And what's really great about these is that they're flat, they're IC rated, meaning that you can have insulation above them. And uh, they're dimmable. I mean, well, they're dimmable and they're selectable as far as the light color. So it goes from 2700K to 5,000 K. So whatever your flavor is, you should be able to find that in this. I think they're pretty inexpensive, real easy to install, and it can, and it can be done after I hang the drywall. So I just use a hole saw, usually use about a four and an eighth to make these fit well. And then uh, we'll go ahead and show you how to put it in. So, so I wanna make this center. So we had 75 opening, so 37 and a half is gonna be our center here. Somewhere right around here. And then our tub is 32, so we'll just make this 16. So this will be our center. And what's nice about these halo lights are so thin that say see my studs are here and here. If I was if I was two inches away from the edge, I could, I could still get that light fixture in there. Um, so you know it's just it's a little tough when it's directly above it because you need to get the box up inside the ceiling. But you know, you can even be over about two inches or so and still be able to get that 
light fixture in the center. If you can't do that with a regular can light, it's about impossible. So it's pretty nice. So as you can see, it just has these little flaps that hold it up into place. Pretty simple stuff. And then this is your selector valve. So depending on what light flavor you want, I usually keep it up pretty high just because for- uh, I like it on the warmest weather. I know you do, but for the lighting for the camera, it's better on the higher end. Oh, really? Yeah, the, they, it makes it too dim. It makes it too yellow. Like that's 3,700K right there. So, yeah, no, 2,700K is what we're gonna keep it on when we when we go sell the place, but for, we'll get it at 4,000K because the camera, you know, you'll see, it makes a big difference. Okay. And these are nice because they already have the push-in fittings that you connect it to. So it really makes it nice and easy. Get this on the ground. Okay, now you just take that box. That's all there is to it.